Why do we want money? Why do we want to keep money on us? What determines how much money we demand from the system? The answers might seem straightforward. We want money so that we can buy goods and services. But there's a lot more to it than that. The approach we'll follow is based on the work of John Maynard Keynes, who developed his theory on the demand for money back in the 1930s. We'll begin with the easy part. Why do we want money? Well, it enables us to buy goods and services. This is called the transaction demand for money. We want money either in the form of cash or demand deposits so that we can do transactions on a day-to-day -day basis. But what determines how much money we demand for transaction purposes? People need more money for transactions in a healthier economy, so in other words, in a richer country. OK, so the amount of money I withdraw or pay for things depends on my income. Yeah. The number and value of transactions in the country will be determined by the level of income. The higher the income level in a country, the higher the demand for money for transaction purposes. And a rise in household income, perhaps as a result of economic growth, increases the number of transactions people can afford, and so they'll demand more money. As well as the transaction demand for money, it also has other functions. Many people also keep some money aside for emergencies, unforeseen expenditure over and above their normal spending. Maybe the car breaks down, or one of the family needs medical attention. It's useful to have some money set aside to cover this, and this is called the precautionary demand for money. Again, the amount of money we keep aside as a precaution will also depend on our income level. It can be quite difficult at times to distinguish between these two types of demand, so they're often grouped together and called the demand for active balances. Apart from the demand for active balances, there's also a passive demand for money. The passive demand for money is the demand for money as an asset, storing some of our wealth in the form of money over and above what we need for transactions, what we keep aside as a precaution. Now surely that would relate to the function of money as a store of value. We call this the speculative demand for money. What will determine the demand for speculative balances? An important factor is the interest rate. Remember we said that money is the most liquid asset, but it gradually loses value because it earns no interest and prices keep rising. Well, one way to explain the relationship between the demand for speculative balances and the interest rate is to consider the opportunity cost of holding passive balances. People have a choice between holding their wealth in the form of money or bonds or both. When we say bonds, we mean any financial asset that earns interest. Bonds are less liquid than money, but the advantage is that they earn interest. And the opportunity cost of holding wealth in the form of money is therefore the interest that could have been earned by holding it in bonds. If the interest rate on bonds is very low, people will hold more of their wealth in cash because it's more liquid. The demand for passive balances will therefore be higher. But if interest rates are high, people have more incentive to hold bonds, where they can earn good interest rather than money. And, surprise, surprise, we can use a graph to explain this further. We can plot the quantity of passive money demanded along the horizontal axis and the interest rate, I, that's the price of holding passive balances, along the vertical. At higher interest rates, people will switch from money to interest-earning bonds, and so the amount of passive money demanded will be less. But at lower interest rates, where bonds don't earn as much, the quantity of passive money demanded will be higher. People switch back to holding more money. This negative relationship is reflected by the downward slope of demand for passive balances curve. But what about the demand for active balances? Well, remember we said that demand for active balances depends on our level of income. It's not determined by the interest rate. So if we want to show it on the same graph for comparison, it's a vertical line. No matter what the interest rate is, the demand for active balances is unaffected. Now, if we combine these two curves, the demand for active and passive balances, we get the total demand for money curve. 
which shows us the total amount of money demanded at any interest rate. An increase in income will cause rise in the demand for active balances, and this will be reflected by a rightward shift of the total demand for money curve. At each interest rate, more money is now demanded than before. A movement along the demand curve for money can only be caused by a change in the interest rate, affecting how much passive money is held.